Greetings. Welcome to my hangar. Come on in. This video is part two in the series on updating the panel within my Flight Design CT aircraft. And I'll be sharing information around the Stratix serial out hardwiring connections into the GRT EFIS unit to receive the ATIS B traffic and weather on the screen itself in your panel. I'll also provide some options around powering the Stratix other than using external batteries and share some information around remote mounting of the antennas and GPS receiver so that the Stratix doesn't have to be up on your window or in your glare shield area of the aircraft. It's important to note that the information I'm providing here is just a home tinkerer. I'm not an avionics technician or anything certified of the sort and I'm working within the experimental category so be aware that's how I'm doing what I'm doing within this aircraft. Second, and this is very important, as I researched this, I found a lot of dated information on the uh, 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 web searches and such. Even the GRT Avionics website, Stratix uh, PDF supplement, isn't the latest and most accurate information. As I contacted them, they were helpful and clarified and, and provided some information that I'll put for content in this video. But know that videos out there on the internet as recent as 2018, 2019, things that aren't that many months ago uh, are not to the latest hardware and software information as far as what we're talking about here today. So if you're looking at older videos, be warned they may not still be relevant. Here's what I've been up to. The EFIS units installed in the panel and the aircraft. I've flown it a few times the last couple of weeks. Absolutely love it. Having a blast uh, playing with all the capabilities. Uh, still very pleased and happy with the purchase. And knowing that I'd be working on the Stratix project, I didn't want to have to rip the panel out to connect the wires in and start to you know the process of getting this uh, operational. So I brought out the Serial 1 input and output uh, wires as well as a ground wire to be able to tie the Stratix in without having to rip everything out. This is a temporary location just to get it you know, all proved out. And you'll see that those are wired into a, a nine pin D sub connector. And then the Stratix is in a temporary location still where I had it when I was running it just to the iPad, which is up on the top of my window in the cabin. I'll give you an idea how that's looking. It's up there, it's just standard suction cup mount. And you'll notice there's a couple extra wires coming out of it here now. And I'll share more about that on the bench in the house uh, after we go for a little hop in the plane and see how everything's working in the panel. This view shows the PFD on the left and the map on the right. To highlight some info, on the map side, the black diamonds are traffic. The vector line shows the direction. An arrow up or down indicates climb or descent. And the numbers represent the difference in altitude in hundreds of feet. On the PFD side, the magenta balloon right in the center on what looks like a tower is representation of my destination that I'm navigating to. And then the white line going down at like the 6.30 o'clock position indicates that there's traffic nearby me and its direction. And it's actually reading myself because I don't have my Stratix configured uh, correctly just yet. But it's a good cross check to confirm. Mm -hmm. 
And here we are on the full map view. To speak to some details, the traffic alerts detecting myself. It shows my tail number, direction of flight, and altitude and difference. The upper right is 123 degrees at 10 knots. That's the wind speed that's calculated from the difference between GPS speed and the PDO static system, which is a handy bit of info to have in flight. The lower right is the ADSB status. It's green and I'm receiving from two ground towers. The lower left shows radars three minutes old. There's no precept or weather to show, but I'm confirming that I'm receiving weather information through the system. And then in the upper left, it's showing that I'm navigating electronically via the GPS to 4MI8, my home airport, and the distance and direction and such to my destination. Getting into the specifics, first some notes on the Stratix. If you have uh, older hardware, I can't speak to how that would work on the Raspberry Pi the older versions. And certainly you want the latest software, so update the software on your Stratix to the, uh, the current software. That's free and easy enough to accomplish. And there's other videos on how you can do that if you need assistance. Uh, as far as the build of the Stratix, I'm not getting into that. Some people buy them, some people build them. I, I bought mine from Crew Dog Electronics. Uh, not everything was readily available and by the time you added up shipping and all the little piecemeal stuff, uh, I could buy the whole shebang from them and I, I was happy to do so. And it's worked great as just a standalone battery powered unit running Wi-Fi to the iPad. But to hardwire it in, there's some uh, some updates that you'll need to make. It, adding a USB to serial out, which I'll get into that detail in a moment. And then making some space in the case requires us to get rid of the Stratix GPS USB card to make room, and I'll explain that when we get open this up and, and show you more of the particulars, but you buy a VK, that's Victor Kilo 162 USB remote GPS antenna. They're about 15 bucks or so, free shipping on eBay. And then uh, let me open this up and I'll explain more. I had to move the 1090 antenna from where it was in the case to make room for some of the USB connections. This case is uh, kind of sacrificial. I plan to buy a different case and repackage some things around uh, as I go to a more of a permanent installation in the plane from a portable installation. And uh, to share a little bit around going to a remote installation. These are a RJ58 SMA connector and you can buy them in, in various lengths and, and sex of the ends. This is a male to female pigtail. Uh, I believe it was three feet long. I bought two of them. And what that will allow me to do is connect to the Stratix box and then run the antennas elsewhere in the plane. And there's, I noticed some nifty rapid prototype or you can fabricate your own mounts to put both of these antennas as well as your GPS receiver more discreetly and remote in the plane and then have your box off the glare shield or out of the window or whatever. So that's a little bit of information on the remote part of the project that's coming. Again, that's a VK Victor Kilo 162 USB GPS antenna and RG, that's uh, Romeo Golf 58 SMA connectors to extend the antennas off of the unit. You can buy these in various lengths from short to real long, but you want to keep them as short as you can from a signal loss uh, and quality perspective. And then to get into what we did to the Stratix, the GPS antenna, simple USB, plug and play. It auto detects, you don't have to do anything about that. Uh, and that, again, that was done because there just physically isn't room with this installed in a USB port to have another USB plugged in next to it. So we have to uh, discontinue the use of the USB GPS antenna from Stratix 
and go to the remote antenna if you so desire to keep GPS signal coming in. I, I like it as a secondary GPS backup on, on my iPad. Uh, if you don't have GPS, if you just want the traffic and weather in, you still are a little bit limited with space. Uh, and the other item that is required to generate the output from this uh, Raspberry Pi board to the GRT EFIS is this TU, that's Tango Uniform, dash S9, dash Sierra 9. And that is a USB to 9-pin D-sub serial adapter. And it's important to buy this from TrendNet. TrendNet box looks like this. That's the name of the company, TrendNet. And there's the TU-S9 model number, USB to serial converter. There are plenty of other USB to serial converters out there, but they are um, from other people that I've talked to as well as GRT. This is the only one they recommend and it's kind of known to work all right. Other people have tried just different brands and they've not worked. I can't speak to what chip and software is within the adapter from the USB to the serial outs, but whatever it is, it plays well with the Stratix and it does output in the GDL90 universal serial uh, code or whatever that software is uh, referred to. If you are putting this into a different ERT, or sorry, uh, EFIS system, uh, it very well likely would work. We're, we're talking common GDL90 outputs. But again, my project is for a GRT uh, Sport EX EFIS unit. And then uh, these are the existing um, receiver uh, for the 1090 and 978 antennas for the weather and traffic. So really the only thing you need to manage is getting the four USB connectors all plugged in within a small footprint. And that required cutting the case up a bit and, and I'll be changing that for my permanent installation. Uh, so that, that gives you an idea. I believe it's um, about a two foot pigtail and you wouldn't go direct from this to your EFIS anyways. You're going to want a connection somewhere in the middle to disconnect either one from the plane for maintenance or whatnot. So it, it's not a really big deal to have this in the mix. And then to adapt the serial out from the USB adapter to the GRT EFIS by a nine pin mating connector. I got this two pack off of eBay for like five bucks or so. And then there are the nine pins. Might not be able to read the numbers real clearly, but pin number two is the serial output. Pin number three is for data in. Even though the GRT doesn't feed data to the Stratix, go ahead and wire it. The future um, updates may take advantage of that. So you're soldering and making this all up. Might as well have it there. And then the lastly, uh, pin number five, which is this one here on the end, that receives the ground wire, which goes to the ground of the aircraft that the EFIS is also tied to. So with those soldered up, uh, and then connected to your Stratix, or sorry, the EFIS, uh, then just plug this into here and you're connected. And the serial ports on my Stratix, I have the uh, middle of the road option which has three serial inputs. I chose number one, this is the first item I'm adding to it, but you can use any open serial port to feed it. But you wanna make sure that the in is going to this out, or you know, rather this, this output is feeding into the serial number whatever, and then that same serial number that you choose for the end, the output is back into the receiving end of the Stratix. Use a matched pair of your serial ports. And then the ground is simply just your ground. A few final things here on the bench to wrap up. I mentioned earlier that I was interested in doing away with the standalone battery pack for power. And to accomplish that, I'll use a 12 volt to 5 volt power adapter. It simply connects to a positive and negative from a source in the plane, providing 12 volt. And then it outputs to a micro USB 
uh, connector, which can plug directly into the Stratix, providing a constant power source to your Stratix. And that'll relieve you from having to, re, you know, get four hours or whatever a battery pack can provide you. I'll still keep this for a backup redundancy, but you can tap into plain power with one of these. And just search micro USB 5 volt, 12 volt adapter. Uh, this was five or six bucks free shipping, not expensive. And then I didn't show on the GRT EFIS side of the project, serial number, whatever you select, in my case one, in your settings, select ADSB so it knows what signal it's expecting to receive on that serial port. And then underneath that setting, the next item is baud rate. Enter the same 115,200 value for the baud rate that this is outputting at for the EFIS to receive at. And then the input to the Stratix from the serial out of the EFIS, you don't need to do anything with that. I forget if it says off or none or whatever. Leave the factory default setting as is. No changes are required. But again, there may be a future expansion or, or capabilities. So I wired it just in case things change down the road. The last item to mention is the software needs to be updated on the Stratix. And that is an image file that is provided from GRT Avionics or it's probably available elsewhere. They enter, uh, email it to me in a, in a zip folder. I downloaded it onto my iPad, and then in a moment I'll show you how to do that update physically on the Stratix web browser. To update the software, open the Stratix web browser. From the menu, select Settings, and then click the Select System Update file. Browse to your downloaded TUS9 software update. I won't click on that because I've already installed it, but it'll give you a message. Wait five minutes and then refresh your home page to verify your software. And what that means is if you go back to menu and then go to your status, you can see the version that you're running here. And that will indicate that you've successfully updated and installed the software. Uh, you'll also notice on the settings page you have the ability to enter your baud rate here serial output baud rate and for the current time frame right now the baud rate recommended is 115,200 if you're working with a, a different EFA system you may need to experiment with lower baud rates depending on the age of your equipment and what it's capable of. But with a current GRT Avionics EFA system and a Stratix with the current software, everything in March of 2020 timeframe, these settings are what I'm using. The other means that you may use to accomplish serial output is to buy a module that's a CP uh, Charlie Papa 2102 USB to serial adapter. And I started with this. I liked it because it was small and then I could use a different connector besides the more bulky uh, D sub styles. But there was a couple aspects about it I didn't like. First, these uh, terminal connectors, when you plug this in, there's very little clearance between them and the upper uh, antenna uh, connectors on the Stratix. Uh, uh, boards and you know how little things lead to big problems and if those were to touch I can't um, Speak to what would happen electronically, but I'm sure it wouldn't be a, a good condition and then secondly The software update that I did on this hooking it into the EFIS It just wasn't playing well I couldn't get it to detect the signal after a couple of different attempts and and trying different things I gave up on that and went to the uh, TUS9, which immediately worked without any issues. I hope the information in this video has been helpful as well as entertaining. If so, please hit the subscribe button and expect other videos as I continue to work on the panel, other projects around the plane, as well as flying. There's more to come. Thanks.